had a chance to go through all the questions yet. I am. <laughs> okay. Are these the questions? No. They're in here? Hey! Happy Monday, everybody. You know, you get to the point where you, you build a business and you run the business. The business gets to the point where it then runs you. That's kind of where we've been. <laughs> it's been great, though. I've had an opportunity to work with so many of you. And so many of you have stepped up to help and support others. And a lot of your customer reviews and the experiences that you've been going through have been a joy and, and a, a motivation and inspiration to so many others that have had an opportunity to hear what Seller Size has done for you too. I want to take a few moments and bring you up to date. Um, the Seller Size Mr. Rebounder app, MrRebounder.com. You can find information about it. Most of you know about it. For those of you who have subscriptions that are renewing, can you believe we've had the app up for a year already? I want to let you know that if your subscription is renewing, that the price that you purchase the Mr. Rebounder subscription for is the price that it will remain for as long as you have your subscription. So we've got our discount pricing right now and that discount pricing as we continue to evolve and add more features. By the way, we should have some more features coming out in the next couple days. It's me. I have to go through and test what they've sent me. And as soon as I've had a chance to test it and feel good about it, we've got the features of um, being able to turn or silent the music. I know that they were working on additional features too. And I will say just that amount right now so I don't put my foot in my mouth and say something that we're working on that may not be available yet, but we've got some really good features that we're going to be adding to it. In addition to that, so can you hand me that spring? I've had some people say, well, what's the difference between a seller sizer and any other rebounder? And I, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. The steel spring, somebody said earlier, they said, well, I've got a unit that has a tapered spring. Can I use that? Of course you can. The difference is the support you're going to have though. The cellar sizer was designed for exercise purposes so that it gives you enough movement and enough resistance. You have to have the resistance to build up bone density, muscle mass, to pump and move the lymph system, back flush valves, and, in, in, and to get the various different benefits that the cellar sizer has. The steel in a spring makes a huge difference. Poor quality steel can be very brittle or very soft. Either way, it doesn't perform the same. When you step on a unit that has tapered spring designs and it's a cheaper unit or cheaper steel and you sink, it doesn't have enough lift, well, you're not going to get as much pumping action or much in the way of benefits. We patented the tridaptable spring because it has a larger diameter in the middle where most people are going to utilize it. It's softer there. And as you use it, you load that spring. The spring absorbs the energy, harnesses it, and then pushes it right back up to you. And we end up with three forces working on the body, not just one. The forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity. To the body, it's all weight. And so by going with the tridaptable spring design, we have the ability, only self-adjusting design spring of its kind on the market. You'll utilize that portion of the spring you need based upon how much you weigh or how high you're jumping. But you have enough support so, and enough resistance so as you do the exercises, you, um, you're not worrying about coming to an abrupt stop or jar. And that's, that's very important to avoid uh, compromising our health. We alter the angle of our body in different positions to create leverage and to focus on different areas of the body. So in a few moments, we're going to be talking about tightening and toning and how to tone the body. We want to lose weight, but we also want to tone the muscles and firm them up. And I'll, I'll show you and explain some of the ways that we do that on a solar size that you cannot get on other different modalities. I had a lady call me up today. Uh, she's from Florida and bless her heart. I, I'm, I hope she, she writes me, but she was telling me about this um, gym that they have in their home and it's got, well, it's got Pelotons, it had, um, oh, it's a one I remember, she had several other different pieces of equipment and they enjoy them. They're fine, not putting them down. 
they're okay. But she said her husband has been on these things and got on the cellar sizer in a week. He lost four pounds. And he's like, what is this? And that's the difference. You look at typical pieces of exercise equipment. It's pretty much an established fact that they will work on different muscle groups. They don't work on the entire body collectively as a whole. Cellar size, although it's not weight lifting, it is weight bearing. And the cells don't know the difference. But the difference on a cellar sizer is the G-forces and the weight are on every single muscle, bone, connective tissue, ligament, tendon, skin, collagen, protein, fibers, fascia throughout the entire body. So I had a lady call me up today and she says, can it really help my husband with this golf swing? Cellar size helps with virtually any modality of exercise or sports or athletics because it targets and trains the body in a way you can't in typical exercise. Nothing wrong, again, with other forms or modalities of exercise. But if you want to have a better yoga experience, you want to have a better um, martial arts experience, cellar size first and see how balanced you are. If you want to help with golf, and I've had a number of people, golfers, um, professionals, I've had a chance to, to talk to over, over the years. And one gentleman, Bill, who I really would like to get back in touch with, we were uh, talking about coordinating a book and putting it together because cellar size works the fascia and the twisting motion that I do on the cellar sizer helps to relieve golfers back or when a group of muscles, same thing with baseball when it, or tennis, when a group of muscles become stronger on one side of the body than the other, it can create a problem with, with our back. And so by doing a gentle twist on the cellar size or moving up and down, we help to loosen the back and balance the muscles out again. And it's, it's been fun working with that. So anyway, that's, those are some, some updates. Um, we should have more on, and I said we'd have more on the Mr. Rebounder app. We should have that. As soon as I have a chance to test it within the next couple of days, we should be adding some of those new features to it. And again, I want to encourage you, if you have the Mr. Rebounder app at a discounted annual price, that's, that's pretty valuable. So it's not something we're going to offer again. So I want you to consider holding on to that. And as we introduce new features, if and when our costs have to increase, those of you who are getting it now at a discounted price, you will keep annual price. You will keep that price um, for as long as you maintain the subscription. Okay, so Ann writes, I've been using another rebounder for the last year and lately I've been doing the advanced workouts for Cellar Sizer app on it. Oh, good. After listening to Dave give his explanation on the benefits, I decided to spend the money on upgrading to a Cellar Sizer. I just set up my cellar size of rebounder. Wow. Oh, capitalized. This is a whole other ball game. If anyone asks if there's any difference between rebounders, I can testify to a yes, all capitalized. I feel the difference of my body or the effect after just two minutes of running. I'm super excited to see the new results in my body. Thank you, Ann, for sharing that. Christine. Hi, Christine. <laughs> She's part of our cellar size family and she's at home right now with her, her family uh, supporting us. She helps on Facebook Live. She does our editing. She uh, fields me some of the questions. She works and interfaces with many of you and, and with me and I want to thank her for, for all her support. And I want to thank Brooklyn who's behind the camera right now taking over and also assisting and, and making sure that things run smoothly so that it's not so stressful for me when I walk in and I'm able to, uh, to um, share some time with you. Christine writes, I don't normally post about myself here, but I was asked how things are going. I started my journey on January 1st, 2019. I've been cellar sizing for 16 months. Honestly, it has been a roller coaster ride figuring out what works for me. During this time, I've had a broken hand, several clots, and a few other problems. I've had to slow down and increase when given the green light. I have to tell you, I notice the difference almost immediately when I'm not cellar sizing. I knew I would have to change the way I live my life to make this work. I also needed to realize that this was about me and not anyone else. I only need to look 
good for me and not worry about what others think. That is easier said than done. I'm a sensitive person. So when someone pokes fun about my weight, it really hurts. I do not eat anything with gluten in it, and that is because my stomach cannot handle it. I eat my largest meal first and taper down just as Dave has mentioned. She's talking about we eat like a king or a queen in the morning, like a prince or a queen in the a- or a princess in the afternoon, and a pauper at night, because the body can only store or burn. And if we're eating a big meal at night and we go to sleep, it's not going to be burning it. All right. I eat my largest meal first and taper down just as Davis mentioned. This really makes a difference. I have also implemented intermittent fasting. This has worked well for me. Since the start of my crazy adventure, I have lost 35 pounds. This has worked well for me. Oh, I am wearing most of my clothes that I have put away, hoping to wear again one day. For all of you that are beginning, you've got this. It won't be easy. I am guilty of my love of sugar. It has taken me a year to really get on a pattern that I am happy with. Thank you everyone who has supported me. I still have a bit to go, but I am pleased with where I am. Thank you, Seller Size family and Dave Hall, Christine. And look at, I tell you, Christine, she's looking pretty good, guys. There's Christine. Christine has had several challenges and her, her attitude has been growing and developing in this whole journey with solar size. And I want to talk, let's talk just a little bit about enjoying the journey because I think it's important that we do that. I've got, I've got a, a, a quote in my office above my desk that says, you can't find happiness at the end of your journey if you're not willing to bring it with you along the way. And it's true. Our goals and our objectives are great, but the process of achieving them is what defines us and our character and the person we're becoming. I've said, and I'm going to, it's worth repeating, especially in lieu of what's happening in our culture right now. We've had a lot of contention, a lot of division, a lot of problems, and a lot of issues. And unfortunately, it seems that a lot of that is being propagated and promoted, and not that the problems don't exist, they do. But how the problems are being handled is something I'd like like to address. If you have a naked, and you may not agree with me on this, and that's okay, but um, if I share something that might be helpful to you in your personal health journey, fitness journey, relationship journey, Um, financial journey, then these are principles. And these principles, I truly believe, and I've seen, that they can apply to virtually every body. When somebody calls me up and they say, hey, I've got this condition, or I'm fighting against cancer, or what about um, uh, weight loss? And I can't give medical advice. But I share an approach that I teach that helps promote better physical fitness. And it's, my wife even put together a plaque because years ago I used to say, rather than fight against that which is wrong, promote that which is right. And I believe in that saying very much. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you walk into a dark room. And it's dark, and that darkness can represent a condition that you are fighting with. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's a condition, health-related, relationship-related, work-related, family or home-related. Whatever that condition is, if we are fighting it constantly in our minds, in our thoughts, then we're feeding it. And it is literally affecting the character of the person we're becoming. So I'll put it in different terms. Let's say there's a dark room and you walk into the dark room and you don't like the fact that it's dark and that darkness can represent one of those conditions. And so you're fighting against the darkness. And 
kicking and screaming and yelling. And when you're done fighting, it's still dark. But the difference is the character of the person you have become in the process of fighting against it. You're dealing with frustration and with anger and with resentment and with despair and with fear and all these negative conditions that become part of your nature. When we fight against that which is wrong, we very well begin to develop the very character attributes of that which we're fighting against. So when people have cancer, I tell them, stop fighting against it. If they're trying to lose weight, I say, stop, stop fighting against it. And they look at me, or, or <laughs> they're on the phone, they're like, what? I said, when you're fighting against that which is wrong, you're dealing in frustration and anxiety and all these negative conditions. So, I just want you to consider it. Let's say you walk into that same dark room. Over here on the wall, there's a light switch. Now, for most of us, it's a dimmer switch. You turn on the light switch and you begin to turn up the light. What happens to the darkness automatically? begins to disappear. Darkness cannot abide in light. So as we continue to turn up the light, we begin to see obstacles that may have been in the way of our being able to reach our goal and objective that we couldn't see before because of all the darkness. And so when we apply this in our own personal life, I tell people, okay, rather than fight against weight loss, brace yourself for where you are right now. We need to enjoy the journey Think of all the things that you are happy about now, that you have that are good in your life. Focus on that. The moment that a negative thought comes in, or a frustrated thought comes in, replace it. This is an exercise. I know it takes, takes an effort, but so does getting in better health. I'm talking about mental and physical health now. When we recognize a negative thought, Turn up the light. Find something positive. Think of something healthful. Read the scriptures. Listen to good music. Think of a good thought. See yourself not as you are, but as you can become. And say, hey, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. I'm enjoying the journey. Your character will start to change. Not that the conditions around you do, but the conditions within you do. And that gives you the ability to move the conditions around you aside because they no longer fit toward the vision of the person you can become, that you want to be. Focus, define the character, define yourself who you want to become. And as far as weight loss, for example, find a picture of where you weighed when you felt good. And if you don't, can't find one, create one or find someone else. You're not going to be that other person, but that person helped motivate you. You focus on the goal or the objective. And you've heard me say this before. I've often said in order to have what we have not, we must first become what we are not. As we become what we are not, then what we have not becomes the natural manifestation of the person we've now become. But in order to become what we are not, we must first be able to see ourselves, each other, that which is around us, and that which is within us. Not just as we are today, but as we can become tomorrow, which is the way I pray that God sees each one of us. See, the moment we see ourselves, not as we are, but as we can become, in our family and home, as a husband or wife, mother and a father, in our physical and our health, in our financial and career, our social and cultural, spiritual, ethical, mental, educational areas of our life. We create the vision, hold on to the vision, it grows and as, And that's true with our conditions. Hold on to the vision, not of what we're fighting against, but what we're striving to become. Hold on to the vision. The vision will grow into the desire. Now we nurture the desire some people call that the first step, faith. The vision is faith. Second step, the exercise of faith. We nurture the desire with prayer, meditation, affirmation, proclamation, declaration. There's power in the spoken word. As we focus and declare it and visualize it, the desire increases and becomes a passion. Now we've got to have it. The passion then compels us to action. 
The action helps create the end result. And I ask people, where does it all begin? Simply with the vision. Ideas affect the way we think. The way we think affects the way we act. The way we act to a large degree will determine our results. If we want to take charge of our results, we have to be willing to take charge of the ideas that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to, whether it's internal or external, on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, if we don't take charge of those ideas, then by default, habits, environment, those ideas begin to take charge of us. And as a result of that, we become reactive to the conditions around them rather than proactive to the conditions that are within us to become. So rather than allow the conditions around us to have power of, to control the conditions within us, our objective here is to give you the ability and the strength. That's what this is all about to reach our greater health and fitness. Now, the same thing is true in the world today. I do not truly believe we will ever have a healthier world in which to live as long as we continue to focus on treating the symptoms of its problems. More and more jails, laws, rules, restrictions, government, police forces are not going to help us reach our greater health potential. When we stop fighting against the things that are wrong, and we start promoting the things that are right. We start teaching our children the principles of honor, integrity, morality, respect, common courtesy, and the work ethic again. We're not going to have all the problems that exist in our society today because the nature of our hearts will change in how we look at each other and how we treat each other. But if we continue to focus on fighting against that which is wrong rather than promoting that which is right. And I know it's hard. I get that. It's hard in our own personal lives as well. But the, the, the biggest thing about, I believe, this life that we take with us is not what we create around us. It's what we create within us. And the, you look at the greatest teachers in the world. They didn't fight against that which is wrong. They promoted that which is right. And because they promoted and created a vision of that which is right, it was so powerful that others began to embrace it. And if we can become that kind of light unto others, we'll make a bigger difference, I think. I'm not saying to excuse the problems. There are times when we have to stand up for what is right. And a lot of that is occurring today, thank goodness. But there's a difference between standing up for that which is right and fighting against that which is wrong. And I hope maybe something I said today will help us understand the difference. Because I want you to find joy in your life. And that joy that's available to all of us is based upon how we ourselves are choosing the choices we're making to respond to the conditions around us. And I'll make it even more simple. You're driving down the road and you've got your food on the seat next to you. A car pulls in front of you and then they want to turn right. I've had this happen to me. They want to turn right so they hit their brake real quick, forcing you to hit your brake real quick so they can turn right. And your food that was right next to you is now all on the floor in front of you. You have a choice. You can be angry, you can be frustrated, you can scream and yell at the person. It's not going to change the conditions around you. But it's going to have an effect on the conditions within you. So you can fight, you can scream, you can yell. Or you can say, wow, I'm so grateful I didn't get into an accident. Or I'm so grateful that the accident wasn't as bad as it could have been. And you pray for that person who obviously either isn't aware of what they're doing, they're so caught up in it, or they didn't care. But you pray for them so that they'll be able to reach where they're headed, 
their goal and objective without causing a problem to somebody else. So in one case, you're angry and frustrated and, you know, yep, people say you're justified to do that. In the other case, you're praying, thanking, being grateful for where you are. I want to promote the latter. I want you to enjoy your journey. I want you to feel good about who you are and where you are right now in your life. Because as you do that, you gain more strength, more conviction, more desire, more persistence, and greater results. And the character of the person you become in the process is what's going to make a difference in your own personal life and the lives of those others that you'll have an opportunity to influence. So I hope I said something that makes sense. It's not really completely where I was going to go today, but um, I did want to make a comment concerning it. Okay, so that was a couple of customer reviews. And thank you, Christine, for being willing to share that with us. What did I do with it? Do you know? Oh, I put them underneath. Okay. Barbara writes, and some of these Brooklyn has pulled from our, our files because she thought they would be helpful today for those of you who are newer to solar size. So thank you, Brooklyn. Barbara writes, I want to take a few minutes to share with you what I think about your rebounder and the great addition it has been to my life. I have chronic active hepatitis C. The way that it affects me is that I battle with fatigue and joint muscle pain on a daily basis. It was very difficult for me to exercise. I love walking, but it took its toll on my joints and seemed to increase my fatigue. Also, it was impossible for me to do during inclement weather, which in Missouri is often. When I heard about the rebounder, it seemed to be too good to be true. Exercise, easy on the joints, and better than walking, I had to see this. In December, I gave myself a rebounder for Christmas, and I was off and jumping. Now for the results so far. As I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was drooping, heading south, so to speak, instead of north. When I started jumping, my, my muscles started firming, and now everything, once again, is heading north. The exercise is gentle, does not fatigue me. In fact, it seems to really aid my circulation, giving me more energy. I was bothered with what felt like congestion in my liver area, and now I jump a short, gentle period of time, and this congestion even clears. It truly has been a great addition to my life. My entire family, my husband, 13-year-old son, and my mother have now started jumping too. My mother at, oops, guess I better not tell her age, over 80, liked mine so well that she purchased one for herself. Thank you, David, for the time you took to explain the rebounder to me and to help me get started jumping for life. <laughs> Carl, this is a good one. I remember Carl from many, many, many years ago. This was one of our early ones. Says, I'm writing to thank you for introducing me to rebounding. I play competitive tournament tennis and consider myself in very good shape. But since doing your exercises, I've gained strength about five pounds of additional muscle on my legs and increased flexibility in my two months of rebounding. At the Health Expo, I saw you stand on one leg while stretching the other leg forward and lowering yourself to your ankle and then standing up. I tried repeating your example and couldn't come close. Now I can do it. I'm sure this improvement in balance, strength, and flexibility has many other, other benefits. Thank you for sharing this valuable information with the public. Thank you, Carl. I have read that many times, and I appreciate it. Van writes, I have acquired a cellar size unit within the last year and was astonished. What I've experienced was like no other machine or exercise process that I've become accustomed to using. It occurred to me later on that this unit regulated every possible movement in your body. For instance, I was able to walk back, walk back problem further than usual. My bowel movement was better regulated. My appetite stems, seems to be more consistent. I feel more energized and could measure my output. But most importantly, my blood pressure stabilized. I thank Mr. David Hall for my new lease on life, Van. Thank you, Van, as always, for sharing that. Says, I was reading your list of benefits of rebounding, and I have a few of my own that I would like to add. One question about, I've been rebounding regularly for this past seven or eight weeks since I lost my job due to COVID-19 because I'm housebound and spend a lot of time on the computer. I make, my, make it a point to bounce every hour, even if it's just for two minutes. Sometimes it's five minutes, but it's not a lot. I'm a woman in my 60s. I deal with a lot of aches and pains. She says, what I've noticed since I've started bouncing regularly is two main things. I no longer have charley horses in my legs and my feet on a nightly basis, sometimes so 
debilitating that I want to cry. I no longer suffer from plantar fasciitis. It always hurt when mo the most when my feet would first hit the floor in the morning. I want to contribute this to rebounding, but I also realize that because I'm not at work and I'm at home, I'm not walking on concrete floors all day. And to be fair, this might be the reason why these two things are better. What do you think, David Hall? And I did talk about this one recently, and yes, the cellar size promotes circulation, flexibility. And as the muscles and ligaments become more flexible again, the circulation increases, those kind of issues can just slowly fail away. Okay, some questions. <laughs> I didn't do these yet. We didn't do these last week. I think we did. Is there an easy way to do this? Okay, some of these look familiar. Okay, it says, can you show us an exercise to lift saggy jowls, the cheeks and the eyebrows? Oh, we need something to firm and tighten the whole face. You're right. That's one that, okay, we're going to come back to that because I'm going to do the tightening and toning and, and defining of the body in just, just a few minutes. Um, okay, Dave, my husband was having hip, back and foot pain. Where do we start on the cellar sizer? Ah, which inflamed spot should be addressed first? I'm unsure about addressing these hurts at this time. Sitting is awful and his heel is sore to the touch, not plantar fasciitis. But he has no fat pad in his heel. He has been bouncing on the pain-free foot with the sore foot hanging off the cellar sizer. Okay. There are a few times where it might be... Um, helpful to have some soft-soled slippers um, or socks that have a little padding um, on them. In a case like that, that might be, that might be an example. I'm going to just stand on the cellar side and talk for a few moments. The movement up and down, this gentle movement right here, and again, I'm not giving medical advice, I have to say that. Consult with your doctor, and I teach and train doctors. Feel free to have your doctor take a look at my work, or if they have any questions, feel free to, to call me. And I want to say thank you to all the doctors now. Again, I, every week now, we have doctors that are they're so helpful. We had a, a doctor that I heard about today um, who was telling all of his patients, virtually all of his patients, this is according to a patient, to get the cellar size, of, and he deals in um, osteoporosis, and he's seeing a remarkable change in people who are cellar sizing with, uh, with those conditions. So I, I'm grateful for that phone call and for, for all the doctors that are out there that, um, that are recognizing the value of the movement up and down, how gentle it is, how effective it is, how it activates the lymphatic system, which holds a negative pressure that creates suction, over a few, after a few minutes, so it helps to pull that circulation between bones and joints and tissue spaces of the body as it vacuums out the internal environment of the body, how the movement up and down helps to break up blood cells, break them apart so we're not, they're not sticky anymore, and that they, they literally we can help change the blood chemistry. The blood cells become separated, oxygenated, and energized, and bind with more fluid, and it's easier now for the heart to move that, those, instead of sticky blood cells, those individual blood cells through capillaries, to the brain and the body parts and function. I don't know of anything better. I really don't. So, the number one movement that I teach people that I believe is the most important, just this gentle movement up and down. It's so natural. Babies do it in a crib. We often do it when a baby is fussy over our shoulder. But this gentle movement relaxes and increases circulation. It warms up the tissue. I truly believe every single athlete who's going to be performing should sell or size first to increase the circulation, massage the tissue, warm up the body naturally so they don't stretch and pull or end up causing damage, um, you know, prematurely. So, um, yeah, that, this is, a, I teach, is the most important movement. This movement side to side drops the hips into the mat, loosening up the lower lumbar. Um, the gentle twist is the second most important that I teach. And it's this simple movement massages the smooth muscles, all the internal organs, as well as the loosening up the lower back. And we can do it leaving our hips straight ahead and working in the... And, and I've talked about this many times on, 
on our videos, but if you have questions beyond that, let me know. Um, when I had my broken ankle and I was in a boot and I was at the University of um, Guam uh, teaching about cellar size, I was going to a crutch and bouncing up and down with one foot over the, the side. The doctors became my, my customers. So it, it helped promote healing, reduce inflammation, and increase circulation. My husband just started cellar sizing with me. He wants to know if it helps varicose veins, and if so, what's the best exercise for it? Also, I have flabby arms. It's hard to see how to do the arm exercise. Can you show us again? Yes, Brooklyn, I did. I read this uh, recently. So we'll show that in, in the toning ones. Um, is there an easier way of doing the stomach exercises? I find it difficult kicking legs out whilst leaning back. And yes, we can do the sit and bounce. It's extremely powerful. I don't know of any exercise, stomach exercise, frankly, that is going to be more powerful than what you can accomplish in the different movements that you can do on the cellar sizer. Does the back kit work for sciatic nerve problems or should it be for other movement routines? And yeah, I, I think we've gone over most of these here. Um, yeah, we did. We went, we went through these. So I'm going to read... I'm going to read something um, from Dr. Chantel. I've known Dr. Chantel for many, many years, and she's been an advocate of cellar size, and I've been one of her biggest fans. She's a, she works in, in acupuncture and in health and in fitness on many levels, and I really appreciate her and the work that she's been doing. We've we have a same objective as to improve the quality of life of those people we have a chance to work with. But she wrote something in lieu of what's going on. I thought I would read this to you, and I know she wouldn't mind. But Dr. Chantel, she says, According to Chinese medicine, the lungs do not like cold or dryness. The mucous membranes protect us from the germs. So sip water every 15 minutes. Doctors say take a few sips of water every 15 minutes at least. Why? Even if the virus gets into your mouth, drinking water and other liquids will wash them down through your esophagus into the stomach. Once they are in your stomach, your stomach acid can kill the virus. Drink warm immune-boosting teas. Throat coat tea. Eat warm soups instead of iced drinks. Second, Humidity, get a hygrometer, never heard of that. $10 on Amazon to measure your room's humidity. Ideal is 40 to 60%. Air out room to prevent mold. Use humidifier and add thieves blend. That's an essential oil. Or I, she says she read, I read one to four parts hydrogen peroxide to water in the humidifier. Neonatal intensive care unit study. Number three, be mindful of getting chilled. It weakens your Wei Qi Qi, or your protective key. We all know how uncomfortable it is to sit under an air vent. Wear a scarf around your neck and wrap around mouth to breathe warm air if going out in the cold. Take Mushroom Immunity Blend. Take an adrenal formula like Natura or Gaia Brands. You can order through Fullscript. She has a link there. I'll see if we can get this on our website. Take Chinese, or on our posting, take Chinese herbal immunity blend, such as jade windscreen, or at least astragalus. Use xylitol with grapefruit nasal spray nightly to prevent the germs from multiplying overnight. Seven, use saline eye drops, saline or xylitol nasal spray, and gargle every two to three hours. This prevents your mucous membranes from drying out and rinses out any germs trying to multiply. And last, but not least, cellar size. Bouncing on this mini tram, trampoline increases the lymph flow. And we know it does a great deal more. So let's talk about getting some more definition, tightening and toning. Now, number one, if we have excess weight, you're not going to see the muscles until we burn off the weight. So a couple ways that we can do this. The most effective is the Jamba Run. And, you know, my daughter, Brooklyn, and, and Liberty, and Justice, they've been doing it every night now. So the next time we have them on, watch. They're, they're, they're awesome. And I just have one that's a little shy. But um, if you keep your back straight, your feet flat, 
and you do just do this jamba run you'll build up to it but as you're doing it those muscles are really really big and they're really going to start to burn off the glucose and sugars and you do repetitions of it that's going to be burning weight having the balance bar makes it easier because you can sit back a little bit keeping the feet over your heels or your body your buttocks over your heels so that you're working these muscles if you lean forward it takes the weight off those muscles so that's how to burn the weight to create the definition we do resistance movements while we're bouncing and it makes it very effective so if all I did was this that'd be one thing but if you have a cellar sizer and you feel your shoulders you grab the deltoids and you move up and down you're gonna feel the dynamic of what that weight is like on those shoulder muscles and that defines those muscles as well but when you take and you do a resistance movement so the moment I do that the muscles pop they 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 flex you hold that position I'm pulling out so my hands are together I'm pulling out so that's working all these muscles here shoulders as I'm bouncing up and down so now you're adding that increased amount of weight and you can just count to uh, 20 or 30 I usually count every two steps as one so one two three and you're you can control the amount of stress by how far you're able to pull it's great for bone density as well so you're pulling and then you're pushing now the moment you push if you stick your elbows out and you push in you're now working all throughout this whole area and your chest as well so now it's pushing in and you're pushing in while you're bouncing and you're counting the same number of times the reason we're doing that again is to take the muscles we're toning them we're tightening them as we're bouncing up and down the movement up and down is doing several things it's helping to increase weight increase circulation open up capillaries increase oxygen and blood flow to those muscles through the pumping action which the cells have to have the body has to have to be able to burn off fuel and so that's a good movement interspersed with those movements we oxygenate the body do it in a clean environment but doing the and when you've got that when you're doing that you can hear the difference in the voice but when you're doing that that movement is going to open up and increase the oxygen all throughout the tissue space of the body so it's going to be working more efficiently it also is very important it gets to the other one-third of the lung that most people don't get enough oxygen to to begin with okay so now we've oxygenated the body pump that oxygen we can either do the jamba run again which is going to help to burn more fuel and and then we, we do some more resistance movements now I'm in the process of putting together additional modules for the Mr. Rebounder app when we have those the the subscription cost of that Mr. Rebounder app is going to go up some more but for those who have it your, your annual subscription won't won't go up there may be a slight cost to add a module but your subscription will always stay the same okay so that's that's the arms we already did the ones where we're pulling up and you've seen me do that one two three four one two three four so now I'm working the whole front part of the arms and as I'm pushing down at the same time I'm working the back of the arms so ladies that's a good one to work back here that's for definition okay so we've worked a lot on and I've taught about some of that before the facial ones all right we have collagen and we've got fat around muscles in the face when the muscles in the face get weak and everything starts to droop then you know we we can see that and feel it if we want to work under this area of the body if you create just like with any other muscle if you tilt you take your 15 20 pound head and you hold it back all these muscles here are, are holding your head up from falling over now as we move up and down and put more weight on it at an angle these muscles 
around the skin, the muscles are going to firm up so that the skin and the collagen can adapt around the, the face. So just doing a little facial exercise um, while you tilt your head back like this is going to help every time I come down help to define and strengthen the, the jawline. Now, jowls themselves, it's more than just the exercise. And it can, it can help some. It's not going to help get rid of them more than likely because the, there's a, could be lack of collagen. It could be uh, skin elasticity um, over time. That gravity stretching out age-related skin conditions, hereditary, a lot of, lot of different things that we're dealing with as well. But those movements can help mitigate that to some degree. Okay, now the stomach exercises, I'm going to sit down because, um, well actually, this one here, when we tilt, the muscles are tight just from tilting, kicking your legs out. Leverage is a lot more weight here than if I just, you know, do a typical sit-up. You're putting more weight on the body. Waist in the hips, same thing. Um, if I conventional exercise, if I wanted to focus on this area and I'm doing, whether I'm laying down or doing some of the movements that focus on that mu muscle, it works, um, but it just takes longer. When you're on a subtler sizer and you're kicking your legs out side to side and coming down at the same time, that's a lot more weight. You're coming down with that weight with your leg up. That's a lot more weight than just lifting your leg up and the rest of the body's involved as well. And the same thing for the back and the buttocks to help lift, tighten, and tone the backside. That will do it. Now, a secret. If you take your body, and you can focus on different areas of the body while you're doing this, and I do this, not all the time, but you know, sometimes, especially if I see an area that I want to focus on. If you tighten your body, you just tighten the whole body and you focus on the areas that you're tightening. You focus on your shoulders and then you focus on your arms and you focus on your stomach and your chest and your buttocks and your legs and you work your way down. As you're bouncing up and down and you tighten, you really tighten everything and then bounce. You do that for a minute and you just focus on the different areas. That helps, that does several things. It, it, the body itself is going to be expanding and contracting still because there's more weight. But the isometric that you're doing while you're increasing capillary circulation to all those areas of the body that are still flexing, contracting and flexing while those muscles are working, I found that to be effective. In, in helping to promote toning as well. Okay, another one, sitting down, of course. And again, this one, you, it's important to do graduated steps, but when you alter the angle of your body and increase weight at a leveraged position, you just have to have a piece of equipment that is going to support that movement. Not all of them do. Um, many units are just too soft or they'll throw you off or they'll cause your feet to pronate. So you, you still have to have resistance. But I would not recommend doing some of these movements on units that do not have good support. That could harm you. Um, the jarring effect of many units are just like landing on the ground. It's not a good idea to do it. So um, if you ever want to try... <laughs> By the way, you notice on our website, I told you we were running out of trifolds. We ran out of trifolds. <laughs> we're about five weeks back ordering trifolds and half folds are, are next. This COVID-19 has sent us all you know, back as far as being able to coordinate. And I've got different component parts made all around the world, nothing from China, but different areas of the world, people that we work with, um, including the United States. <laughs> so I can assemble a, a really good piece of equipment. But we've got set behind a little bit in our, our manufacturing processes and supplies. I still have 
my map material made here in the United States being shipped over to Taiwan to, um, so they can do all the stitching and, and uh, uh, assembling of it. But um, in our steel and the best quality steel on the market. Um, anyway, take your hands, you can put them by your hips. As you start to bounce up and down, you can support your back. As you tilt backwards slightly, you're working all these muscles. There, the moment you tilt backwards, everything's going to be tight and it's going to stay that way while you're still tilted so that you've got an isometric for as long as you're doing the movement. Plus, you have an increase of weight. So it's weight bearing. So this one here will help to strengthen the muscles and you can support your back. As your back becomes stronger, then you can take away your hands and bounce up and down. And it's all being done right here with the stomach. As you continue to get stronger, then you can tilt slightly, lift up one leg, and now you're putting the weight in the lower abdominals and you're working your thigh at the same time. When the leg is tired, you can lift up the other leg. As you become stronger, you can lift up both legs, bounce a little higher, all being done right here with the stomach muscles. As you get stronger, you can go cheek to cheek. And as you're doing that, all these muscles are working as well. Or as you become stronger still, in and out or up and down, you get the general idea. So those are all different movements that are designed to focus on different areas of the body. When you're done with that last one, I recommend uh, do a little twisting here to help loosen up any stress or tension as well. And we always end, we always begin, and we end with the health bounce or the baby bounce. So that's our program for tonight. I want to thank all of you for making a difference in the lives of so many people. Please feel free to share this with as many people as you think it might be helpful for. And if you have additional questions, please go ahead and send those in. I think we had a whole list of questions today that some of them got, we'll do them next week because I don't know what happened to them, but, but uh, I think the email got lost or something. But I want to thank Brooklyn for putting together the ones that she did. And Christine, I know you've gathered some additional ones and we'll look forward to, uh, to reading those next week. But please, if there's anything we can do, give me a call. And for anybody I may have offended tonight, I apologize. I'm, I'm just like everybody else here, imperfect. But I have a, we have a common objective, I think most of us do. And that's, what can we do to make a difference? And what can we do to reach our greater health potential? And that's, that's what it's all about. So thank you for discovering Cellular Size, for being a part of the Cellular Size family. And remember, you don't have to work out when you can play in. Thanks. <laughs>